Welcome to CEO Check-In. Things are feeling fantastic here in New York City. They just lifted the ban on you know, closing restaurants early and all the restrictions that we've had here in New York. So it's feeling a bit back to normal. We even had fireworks last night to celebrate. Thank you, Cuomo. Um, I was at a benefit with a member of our community, Aaliyah Thomas, and we were helping to raise money for the New York Food Pantry. It was called Dinner and a Movie, put on by the Tribeca Film Festival. So much fun. We saw Big Night with Stan Tucci and Minnie Driver and some of my favorite actresses. It's, a, it's an older movie, but totally worth seeing, especially if you love good Italian food. So we got to eat good Italian food while watching a movie about people making good Italian food and raising money for an important cause. I hope you are also getting back out there. Please say yes to all the things you get invited to. We need to learn how to be social again. Everyone at this benefit last night was joking about how we've forgotten how to talk to strangers. Um, but I met some great people and you can see the whole thing on Instagram story if you wanna check it out. So I'm so excited for our guest today. We have Heidi Finley, the founder and CEO of Maven Meals coming on. We met a few years ago when she did some one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and she has stayed a very active member of our community. She spoke on our Million Dollar Women Summit panel uh, back in April, some of you might have heard her there, and she had so many amazing pearls of wisdom for anyone with a food company or really delivering any kind of a product or service. She has scaled up very quickly. She's going to tell us all about it, and she's in the middle of franchising. And a lot of women in our community have thought about franchising, wonder if it's right for them. So I think you're going to get a lot of questions answered today with Heidi. Um, I'll bring you on in a moment, Heidi. Can't wait to see you on here. Welcome, Valerie. Welcome, Alyssa. And if you're joining us for the first time, CEO Check-In is a place to meet CEOs who have been successful in their businesses and learn directly from them. We also do live coaching when we don't have a guest. And um, this is the place to get your questions answered. So if you wanna be one of our guests, you can reach out to alex at juliapim.com and we can have you on. If you're a current member of Million Dollar Women Masterclass, we love having you in our community. We have a new class that just launched. It's complete, fantastic women who are scaling up their businesses from all over the country, including some food and beverage. So I know they'll be excited about this episode. And before we bring in Heidi, I just wanna do my quick go big tip of the day. I always give a go big tip on CEO check-in. Today's go big tip is to study emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is understanding how to manage your emotions and the emotions of people around you. It also means having empathy for people around you. Now that might seem really obvious and basic, but not everyone has high emotional intelligence. And one of the things we have to do as leaders is figure out what am I good at and what am I not good at and study and learn and seek out mentors or coaches to round out our skills and the things we're not good at. So when was the last time you thought about your emotional intelligence? And here's where this comes into play. When you're hiring, when you're managing your team, if you're fundraising, in any interaction with someone where you want a specific result, it's not enough to just have IQ. It turns out that 90% of top performers have high emotional intelligence. So if you're not quite sure if that's you, it might be something to Google, check out, do an assessment online. Daniel Goleman wrote the fantastic book, Emotional Intelligence, that kind of launched the whole movement of looking that, at that as a legitimate form of intelligence. I know that when I grew up, people didn't talk about EQ, they only talked about IQ. And I'm so delighted, especially as a mindset expert, that EQ is now a part of the conversation. So study emotional intelligence if you want to scale up your business. It's something you will use every single day and will help you scale and thrive. All right, with no further ado, I'm going to bring on Heidi Finley to talk about her experience building up Maven Meals. Heidi is someone I admire so much. She is really talented and amazing. Hi, Heidi. I'm just singing. Hello. Your <laughs> Good morning. Good. Good. How are you? I'm great. All right. It's still just morning there. You're in the Seattle area, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. Yep. And I love all the green behind you. Yeah. We don't have a lot of that here in New York. 
<laughs> yes, yes, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. So oh, good. Well, thanks so much for yes. making the time to come on. I know a lot about your story, and I'm so excited to share you with all the women watching, and maybe some men. Um, maybe you could just start with how did you come to start a fresh made meals delivery company? Where did where did all that come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I started the company about 10 years ago, and um, prior to starting it officially, um, I was in grad school and was a household manager and private chef for a family, and um, one of my good friends actually said, like, hey, would you help us with some meal prep, and I said, ah, like, sure, I'm, you know, I did all this meal prep for this family, and um, so I said, find me, you know, find eight 10 people that might be also interested in this and um, make it worth my while because it's, you know, if you're cooking for one, you might as well cook for many. So, um, so she did. And I ended up just piloting this idea of preparing a, a weekly meal menu that would change every week. Um, and, you know, people could just order what they wanted, no minimums, no, you know, uh, no subscription. It was just kind of a la carte. And um, were you doing it out I, of your I, own kitchen, or like where did you? I did. I did it out of my own home kitchen, um, kind of just under the radar. So it was all friends and family. <laughs> so um, because it's it's really it's not something you're you're you know allowed to do. So I kind of just um, just tested this out out of my own home kitchen, and I did it for about nine months until it just got to the point where I I kind of realized how much time I was investing in this little side hustle between, you know, planning the menus and, you know, making the ingredient lists, never mind, um, you know, shopping for it and making it and then, and then delivering it all at the end of, uh, at the end of the day. So in my home refrigerator, it was just like packed the gills, you know, I had to like clean out everything I wanted to eat. So I had I can only imagine, so, I mean, as a mom with yeah. two boys who eat so much, <laughs> even just to keep up with them, it's so much more. Yeah. I can't imagine doing it for nine families or 10 or however many you have, but I will say that knowing you a bit, I can see why all your friends and family would have signed up because you've <laughs> been cooking you. since you were what, like 10 years old or something? Yeah, I, the, the story goes that um, I was homesick with the chicken pox um, in third grade and I was just so bored of just sitting around that I found a turkey in my family's refrigerator and, and basically got out the Betty Crocker cookbook and, and just like figured it out. <laughs> And so when they came home from work that day, they uh, they had a, a full like Thanksgiving, you know, turkey and, and the whole nine yards all waiting for them. <laughs> so, oh my God, and you're in third grade. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember Amazing. my dad being like, how did you even like get that thing out of the like refrigerator? <laughs> you know, so. Um, oh, that's so, so cute. Pretty. I love that. Yeah, not everybody, you know, knows from so early what their yes. passion is, but it sounds like from early on, you were like, this is this is my thing. Yeah, I, I was super passionate. I, and from that kind of point forward, I I really took over a lot of, I was, I love to go grocery shopping, you know, and I love to plan the meals. So I kind of just said, like, can I just take this over? I was really, I was really active in athletics then. And so it was just kind of like, you know, can I just like do all the planning? And then like, I would, you know, put things together for my family between like, you know, gymnastics and school and um, but I kept I kept doing that all through high school and um, and then I went to Cornell for hotel and restaurant management uh, to kind of continue on. I decided not to go to culinary school, but I really wanted to. I, for a time, I kind of thought like, oh, I really want to do stuff with you know food and um, maybe in like a spa environment. You know, I was kind of young and thinking like, oh, wouldn't that be glamorous to like be in a spa? And, <laughs> You know, probably not, right? Really you probably like, would never even make it into any of the services. <laughs> so, um, but but in at Cornell, I, I I did have the opportunity to take some culinary classes and and learned a lot of the the real basics and and worked in their prep kitchen, you know, to kind of um, do the they have a teaching hotel there on on site, and so that gave me some really great basics, and then. But really, do you mind if I ask, had you ever met a woman entrepreneur who ran like a big successful business? Did you have role models back then? I, you know, not a woman, um, not women entrepreneurs, but my dad was an entrepreneur and he was always like my total role model. I knew from a really early age that I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I just, 
I was super independent from the, from like the day I was born. And um, so I just, I was really never meant to, um, I was really never meant to work for somebody work else. Somebody else. <laughs> no, no, yeah. So it's good you didn't go to the spa because you probably No, no. So fast. What kind of business was your dad in? Was it also like food or restaurants? No, or? it wasn't. Um, he, he owned a, a company called Freedom Driving Aids and he um, converted vans for the handicap so they could, they oh, could be mobile and drive. And um, so it was, it was just a really cool business that, um, you know, it was, it's very fulfilling. And then fulfilling. you called them a few times because the whole delivery part of your business, right? Mm -hmm. You have to get that right. I mean, it's all Absolutely. Delivery. Absolutely. Yep. So, um, that, oh, yeah. that was He must know a bit about that. I bet he helped out with that part a little bit. Oh, totally. So, all right. So we're going to fast forward because I don't yeah. want to run out of time. There's so much I want to ask you about. Yeah. Okay. So now <laughs> Maven Meal's up and running. You've been up and running for, for 10 years. Help for us understand the, the scale of it a little bit just for people watching, like how many employees, what are the revenues? Just get us up to speed on yep. that. Yep. Yep. So um, we are currently at just over 30 employees and we send out right now it's it varies um but around 700 meals a week or not 700 meals 700 orders a week which equates to several thousand meals um, Amazing. every single week and um we are we're doing just over uh, about two and a quarter million was last last year um, fantastic so, that's amazing how long did it take you to get to a million that might help people listen it, to it a million me, um it took me six years to get to a million. And that was just like, we, <laughs> we joked for a long time. There was a really small staff and I'm like, when we hit a million dollars, we're going to Disneyland. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just like, you have that, you have that sense of like, when you're going to hit a million dollars, you, you have like made it. Um, and while it is a super success, I was like, okay, we, we're, we're not going to Disneyland. We're so busy now. <laughs> we have a whole just... new set of problems yeah. to solve now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, but I um... hope you did celebrate. I'm sure you celebrate. Oh, we did. Knowing you. Yes. yes. With my tip of the day, emotional intelligence. I yeah. Know you have very high emotional intelligence and your yes. team loves you. And you love your team so much so that I remember when we first met, you may not remember this, but it was very hard to get you out of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. spent some of our first sessions with like, you're like, but I love being in there. Mm -hmm. So I am curious, this ties into my next question. Is there something you think you could have done to get to a million faster or sooner, since that's what we're helping our women to do? In retrospect, yeah. what did you figure out that maybe if you'd done it sooner? I, I absolutely think we could have. Um, I think that um, my approach for uh, in the beginning, I was really afraid to grow the business too fast to really um, to, to have the quality slip, you know, we've, I, I heard way too many stories about people, you know, kind of, um, just trying to like grow just to grow. And so it was really important to me to keep the quality really high. And I think that, um, in retrospect, looking back at it, some of the things that really enabled us to all of a sudden grow quickly was really making some investments that seemed kind of scary to make. Um, like we really invested a lot in technology. Um, we, we started using a kitchen management software that, you know, really enabled us to scale our recipes on the fly, do our inventory, you know, like automate a lot of these processes that were just really eating up a lot of time. And it was a really minimal investment. And just having all of those, um, you know, just the, just the recipe side of things, never mind the, you know, the other kind of, um, technology we've invested in now, but I think had we had like really taken a look at, you know, I would get these sales calls from, from places and I'm like, I'm not big enough for that. Like I'm not ready for that. And, and I think had I really listened, like had I actually just like, if I wasn't so stubborn and just like, oh, I can do that, like I got this handled. Um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, systems and technology are a game changer, right? Because then yeah. you could focus more on the part that you love and are good at, which is creating the menus and having yep. your own team and all that. Yeah. What are the three things you think? Because I'm sure there are 20, but so one would be if you had you know, invested earlier in like really great technology so you could scale quickly without worrying about the wheels falling off the bus. Mm -hmm. What would a second thing be that maybe if you'd done it earlier might have made a difference? So I think that um, there, yeah, definitely, the, definitely the technology. I think for me investing in, in marketing sooner, 
Um, I think I've always had kind of this negative, um, kind of a bit of a negative feeling about like people will people will come if they want it. Like I'm not going to push it on them. And really, and uh, and really, that's been a game changer for us. I mean, to, shock, to push it out there. Right? I know you invested in social media. You redid your whole website. Yep. Were there other things you did in marketing that that made a difference? Uh, and we, we started doing paid advertising before it was all word of mouth. And then we would um, kind of any marketing budget we have, we would put into the local community into like, you know, school auctions or different, you know, donate to different events and stuff. And that was in, and that was really effective. I and mean, we grew our, um, we grew our business locally, right? Where we have a retail shop as well. And like, that was our least, popular market and now it is absolutely our most popular so so that kind of marketing did work but that's hard marketing to do on a large scale i mean we we cover a delivery area that's probably 50 60 mile radius around where we are so you can't you can't go that deep in every area so you know really starting to invest in some some paid advertising and and really starting to see that um, pay off, and I mean that's paid off in space. So, um, and what's nice is you can measure it right away. I think women absolutely. get nervous about paid advertising. Like I can't spend you know fifty or hundred thousand dollars. Well, you're not going to spend it all at once. You can yeah. try it, right? And if what works, you'll keep doing, and then that'll pay for the next. And if it doesn't yeah. work, you'll stop, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, were you? Did you have those fears a little bit too? Absolutely. Yeah, and it's you know because it's always scary to just like throw this money out there and like, just be like, is it like, is this actually going to work? <laughs> um, and, and it very quickly did pay off. So, but it was just kind of getting someone to help me like see that, you know, you need to make that, you need to make that leap. And, and then I think the other thing that- What's the third thing? So I'm going to recap. Give me a second. Yeah. Just join so us. The, this is Heidi the Finley, the CEO and founder of Maven Meals based in the Seattle, Washington area. And she's telling us her three things that she wondered if she did them earlier, might have gotten them to a million faster since most people watching us are trying to get to a million. So number one, invest in great technology and systems. Number two is invest in marketing. And I can't wait to hear what number three is. I think number three is something that you really helped me with, Julia, is, um, you know, I, I would set kind of incremental goals, but it was just kind of, it was, it was small things that it was just like, you know, let's, let's make it through Thanksgiving. Like, you know, let's, <laughs> let, let's, make it you, didn't, you didn't want to buy the new fridge. I remember the fridge yeah. was like, that was a yeah. big issue, that fridge. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I think that you really helped me, um, look at where, where do I want to be in five years? And then like, and then what are the things like working backwards? I was really, I was kind of going at it in a, in a wrong way. And, and the other thing that you really helped me think about, I was, I was really thinking about, um, you know, trying to, I think when we were talking, one of the big goals I had was to, uh, like, we really need a new kitchen, um, which is, which is now happening. We're in our I building. I know, I'm so excited kitchen. about that. That's um, great. But really thinking about that and thinking like, how am I going to, like, how am I going to save up that money? How am I going to get that money? And you really helped me shift my thinking a little bit to not like, um, you know, how to, how, or I was looking at it from the perspective, I, you've changed my thinking so much, I can barely fix, remember how I used to oh, think. Oh, good, I'm glad. It was, <laughs> I, I remember, like, I remember, but go ahead, you go ahead, I'll fill it. How can I cut my costs? in yes. order to make it. And really you were like, no, like, how do you, how do you make more money? <laughs> so you can, so you can do that. <laughs> so I remember when you did the Excel spreadsheet, which yeah. you know, I often assign to women in our community, do a Google doc, a Google spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet of like, how much more money could I make if I do this thing? Because yeah. otherwise you're just going to be up at night worrying about it. We kind of should always do that when we right. bring on a new, a new team member or invest in a new refrigerator or a new kitchen. If there's another Two hundred thousand dollars to be made there, then then do it, right? And yeah. I think once you did that math, you were like, "Oh, I have to go for this." Yes, yes. And so it was really great to kind of say, like, "Okay, what do we need to get our orders to?" And then you know, never mind just like getting our orders there. Like, how can we raise our average order value? And you know, so and we made some massive strides when I when I shifted my thinking to that. You know, we kind of set this. You know, our like 
if we can make it to 500 orders, you know, that is going to be like the end all be all. Now we've like totally blown past that. <laughs> and we're at, oh, you know, amazing. 700 orders a week. I so, love it. And you really brought your team on board for that. I remember you being very yeah. intentional about setting goals because you guys, your business is brutal, right? It's like Thanksgiving, Christmas. I mean, we're all hanging out with our family and you guys are working like crazy <laughs> hours, right? To yeah. get all those meals out. Yeah. If I did do the emotional intelligence tip, I would be curious, like, what's one thing? Because I think you're a fabulous leader. I really do. Oh, and I, I'm curious, what's one thing you think you do well? I know we're not good at bragging about ourselves, but as a leader with your team. Uh, I think that one thing I've done well over the years has been, um, I think, I think it's changed a little bit as my role has changed. But I think in the early stages when it was a small team, um, I think really being in there with them and really setting that really um, good example and not being too good to do anything that I was asking anyone to do. Yeah, you were packaging um, and, up meals, sweeping the floor, right? Totally. Like whatever needs to happen. Yep, yep. And um, as I've grown now, I'm now totally out of the kitchen and have, you know, really helped build up the leaders that have come behind me and kind of, I really have, have enjoyed the process of mentoring um, some of the some of the people who came in as you know just low level and have been with me now for five plus years who are now the ones who are running the day to day operations and really um, and really starting to push them in the ways that uh, I was challenging myself and and just really starting to 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 just develop them as leaders um, and be. And, and, you know, still understand, you know, like, yeah, like mistakes are going to happen. You're going to miss a week of like labor costs. You're going to miss a week, like wildly on projecting like what we're doing, but just kind of, okay, that happened. What can we learn from it? How could we approach this differently? And um, so I think. And that, helping them to feel ownership. I think that's one thing yeah. you do really well is also once you got out of the kitchen, right, that leaves room for other people mm -hmm. to step up and lead. Yeah, and it's been really amazing to me to watch that happen. Um, and I'm I'm so I'm so proud of the people who are in the kitchen now, running it day to day, and in the you know the creativity that they're bringing to it, and really that, and really the culture that's um, you know it's a self perpetuating culture at this point. It's like people come in and they either it's either instantly not a good fit within a month or they're there for years, <laughs> you know? So I love it in, because in yeah, that... you have such a defined culture now, right? And yeah. You probably know pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I also, I wanted to say for people listening, because we do have a number of food companies in the masterclass right now. If you have a question for Heidi, you can put it in the chat and I will, uh, or whatever it's called, the comments, and I will look <laughs> out for that. Um, I want to shift gears to talking about franchising because yeah. it's very exciting what you're doing. You're looking to duplicate Maven Meals. You know, my son, who's a health nut, is on me about, why isn't she coming to New York? But <laughs> in time, with, in time. I know, you're starting with the West Coast. I had to explain that to him. We did just get a sweet greens across the way and we were like, that should have been a Maven Meals. <laughs> Someday. You can wait. You can have it when he gets out of college. You know, like there you go. Um, yeah. But no, what I'd love to talk about is how did you make that decision? And what are some of the challenges you're facing? Because I think women, a lot of women are like, oh, I think I want to do that. But I'm not even quite sure how I'd go about it. So I'd love you to share yeah. that. Yeah, how did you so make the decision, this, first of all? Yeah, I was, um, this is it's kind of funny. I was, uh, for years, people have asked me like, oh, are you going to open another one? Are you going to franchise? And, you know, for years, I said, there's, there's no way like I like I couldn't teach someone how to do this like there's like there's so many moving parts and um, but really I think one of the things that came out of the pandemic for us was really having to we had we were already on the path of getting some really good systems in place and investing in um, some software you know kind of upgrading you know to meet the needs of the current business and um, and you grew by 50, 60% during the pandemic from what I remember you reporting at the Million Dollar Women mm. Summit. Did I get that right? You grew a ton. Uh, over 100%. What? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So That's crazy. It was, it was crazy. And so, I mean, we were really, I mean, we doubled our staff in the matter of, you know, a couple months. And, you know, it was just like, 
just like go. And so, um, and really kind of stepping back last late last summer, after we were kind of like, we had settled into the new, you know, level of business. And, and um, I was, I was vacuuming one day, like casually, <laughs> as you do. And uh, I just had this, I was like, you know, my mind was just kind of like wandering. And I was thinking about, I had just, um, just kind of put together the whole project plan for a new proprietary software for us that would really like, really streamline the back end process. And I kind of, I was like, maybe I should, maybe this is the thing, like maybe this is what I, I want to scale is this software, like sell it to other meal delivery companies because I, you know, I've been talking with a number of other companies and everybody seems to have this problem. Like they don't, they have all these disparate systems that they can't kind of like get, you know, they're spending so much time and I'm like, we have figured that out. And so that kind of quickly led me to, well, I'm like, well, if we've figured that out, like, why can't we just like duplicate the whole thing? And so I really started doing some hard looking at um, the franchise model. It wasn't something I was super familiar with. And so I, I t went into like total education mode and <laughs> reached out to some, you know, people talked to some people and okay, what does this look like? What's entailed? And so I, I made the decision pretty quickly. Um, I tend to, I tend to be a very good decision maker. Um, well, I have to press pause on that because that is so valuable and actually essential as a CEO. You know, we're always seeing women coming to us and they're curious about scaling and million dollar women, but they, they can't make a decision. It's like, right. We tell them all about the program. They're like, I don't know, maybe I need to meditate on it. It's like, no, when you're a yeah. CEO, you don't get to go meditate on it. Yeah. Right? We're making all these decisions all day long. So that's yeah. like, and quick sometimes, right? Without yeah. getting to do all the research. Yeah. So for you, that you just were like, we're going to go for yes, it. Yes, I did. And I actually, I am a, I am known for, I'm kind of famous for just like, this isn't it, this isn't it, like, oh, this is it. And like, we're doing it. And so well, that's I actually- that's a coincidence that you got I, two million and you have that quality. Yeah, <laughs> I did way. stop myself and say like, okay, like I went away for a weekend, like really, I'm like, this is a big decision. Like, this is a, this is a whole new business. This is a whole, like, this isn't- A big learning curve for you, right? It is, it's, it's a huge learning time. curve. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that I was ready. And I really, I was really ready to be doing different work. And I, I was really enjoying kind of the mentorship that I was doing, like I mentioned earlier, with my current staff. And I thought, this is, this is a good, this is a good fit going forward. Really, I have so much information and knowledge to share in building a business and um, teaching people. And it's so fulfilling, like the actual work is so fulfilling of being like, as a franchisee, you know, we get emails day after day after day, like, you know, from customers who are just so thankful that we're helping them. And so I was like, I want that for other people. And so I and, and let's also press pause and say that there are so many not healthy franchises, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the world could use more healthy food readily available, right? So <laughs> I'm very happy you're doing that. Yeah. Right. And then the other piece of the puzzle is I think you were getting a lot of signs that I'm sure confirmed your decision. And you said nothing was off limits. So I'm gonna share something you shared with me, yeah. which is that you received an email from a customer saying, are you taking investment, right? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't wanna get that email, right? Where it's like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. I think the universe is trying to tell me something. Like how yeah. did it feel when you got that email? Yeah, I was, I was just like, at first I was kind of like, is this for real? Like, <laughs> but I was, yeah. I was, I was really flattered. And, you know, the, as, as a investor who is a customer, you know, reaching out saying like, I feel like you have something, you know, worth investing in and, you know, like, please, please reach out. And I was, yeah, I was totally flattered. And, and, you know, cause you do get kind of, I think as, as leaders of our own companies, you we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we're actually doing you know i look at what i do and i'm kind of like yeah like we send out these meals that, you know it's you're so close to it that you don't realize like like building a company from like literally having like you know five hundred dollars in my bank account to you know like just like going at it 
just like this has got to work. <laughs> to right, and a team of 30 and delivering over 7,000 meals a month. Like, yeah, yeah, how did that even happen? But you're right, we do lose sight of that. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to you know, stop and appreciate those moments. And I'm so happy you shared that email with me because yeah. sometimes, you know, we, we miss the chance to celebrate where we're at. But right. I want to celebrate where you're at, having watched you grow this, yeah. you know, even so much in the last couple of years since I've known you. So I'm so mm -hmm. happy for you and proud and excited of where you're going next. We Thanks. have to wrap up soon, but I yes. would love you to share what are some of the challenges of franchising in case someone is thinking yes. going down that path. And I know you're not too deep into it, right? We're no, gonna, I'm after not. After you come back and tell the story when there's like five other native yeah. meals out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I think um, the biggest learning curve of, of the franchise um, is the, it's a shift for me because being an entrepreneur, I have loved being very agile and just being able to like make, make changes on the fly. And um, that part is, uh, that part's hard with the franchise and in getting it set up, you know, it's very, it's very structured. It's very legal. Um, and so there's been a massive learning curve for me, just kind of what, like what that looks like. And also really starting to think on a, on a national level versus, you know, um, who are my suppliers? Like, oh yeah, it's fine to just send, you know, Richie to the store to pick something up. Well, you can't like, that's, you can't run the business that way. And so Not really so much. trying to make the relationships with, you know, national distributors and, you know, making sure that every piece of the, the system is very thoroughly laid out. And so really, um, it's really forcing us to grow up. Even, I mean, we got to a point where we were ready to do that, but even just even more so, and just really challenging me to, to think, um, think on a whole different level in a whole different way. And, um, as, as you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the boat all of a sudden where I need to be, um, having a sales hat on and that's like a super struggle for me. So, um, right, that's I'm, not something you've really had to do. You had customers just flooding in and yeah. now you're going to want to, you know, it's not really selling them on it, but you're going to have to have conversations that are like sales conversations with franchisees, right? right? And make sure mm -hmm. they're the right fit. Exactly. And so, so really that's kind of, um, it's a whole different set of, um, a whole different set of skills really from kind of the true operational side of things to really vetting people and making sure that, you know, they understand what they're getting into. It's not an easy business. It's a very fulfilling business, but day to day, it's not, it's not easy. Um, well, and good for so, you for taking on this whole new challenge. If someone's watching and thinking, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I could do it. What's like one thing that would make it not a good fit for people, do you think? Because you did so much research about this. To start franchising or? or yeah, if someone's like, I, I think I want to franchise, like what, what should they be thinking about to make that decision other than vacuuming? <laughs> <laughs> Just go back. I don't know. Do the dishes. You'll be fine. Need to do. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I think that it would not be a good fit for um, for someone who doesn't like to um, who like true mentorship and leadership isn't really your thing. Like if you don't like if you're really technical and like that's what you're passionate about, like you know that it might not be a good fit. Um, and. Um, what about the systems? I would think you'd have to have really awesome yeah. systems. Yeah, I was gonna, that's replicated. what I was going to say. Um, to just have it be kind of like really willy nilly about, you know, yeah, you just, you know, show up and you make some meals. And, you, you know, I think that someone who's not systems focused, it would really be a struggle. Um, because you ultimately have to train all of these other people to do what you do at the same level as you. And that's, and that's the other thing. Um, if, if some, I would, I would think, but it's not always the case, uh, that people have a varying level of standards. 
So I think someone who the like the quality standards, if they're just in it for the money, it's that's like not the not the way to go. Like, I think really because you're really and that's one of the things for me in franchising in thinking about, you know, having all of these other people running Maven Meals this has still got my name on it at the end of the day, <laughs> you know? Yes, so, and your standards just, are really high, right? And you're going to yes. want to walk into any one of those places and feel great yes. about how they're yes. delivering, making and delivering the food. Well, yeah, will absolutely. they be just delivery or will there be a retail portion too? Or maybe you it's just delivery. Just, just delivery. Just delivery. Cool. So, and I yeah, love we, how on your website, you're like, we're for hectic people who don't have time to make great healthy food. I think yeah. that category of people is only growing, right? Yes. Yes. People who like don't have time to deal with it all. And you know, I'm part French. I love cooking. So that's one of the ways I relax is cooking mm -hmm. for my family. But I know a lot of women are like, no, just order it in. You know? Yep. So yep. yeah, it's going to be a big market for you. What roughly did you have to spend just to get to this place to be franchising? For the franchise? Um, yeah. to, to this point, probably, it's not a... I mean, in the grand scheme of business, it's not a like tremendous amount, but I'm at about 100000 Okay, to make the so, book that you would present to someone. Is that what it's called, the book? It's got the operations, manual. like the operations manual. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, and I invested in, um, I partnered with some consultants who are specific to franchises because there is so much that I didn't know that I just, I, I can't imagine now, knowing what I know now, I can't, I was very smart in, in my, decision to do that that oh, I good. there is no way and it would have taken me I mean I've come from nothing to ready to sell you know our, we are legal our FDD is our disclosure document is done everything is ready um and that's been about nine months but I can't imagine having done it I mean just the operation that seems quick that actually yeah seems quick. it's quick the operations manual alone is almost 500 pages, you know, so it's just oh my like, goodness. Wow. just having That's to amazing. write that. So it's, yeah. Yeah, and you want some help with that. That sounded like a very good investment. Well, yeah. and, and just like when you talked about, you know, earlier in our work together, how do I redo the kitchen? Where do I cut, you know, to redo the yeah. kitchen? No, this too is about, wait, how, I'm sure people are watching going, spend $100,000. I know. But if this is a five or ten million dollar opportunity, yeah, then you yep. spend a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So before we wrap up, mm -hmm. help us understand, Heidi, what Maven Meals will look like five years from now. Let's just have some fun with this. What do you yeah. think is so, going to happen five years from now? Five years from now, my goal is to have a hundred locations across the country, and I am really focused on kind of our exit strategy. Um, so that's that's for me. That's that's really, I'm really excited about building this up and, um, and selling it and watching it just continue, continue to grow. Um, but I, I think in that. another five years, I'll be, I will have my time and ready. You're ready for great time. You really, really are. And also, yeah. also, we need you because, right, we want healthier options. We have less and less time to do that. So I can't wait to see it thrive so long as New York is a location. <laughs> it's on my list. All right, good. Right after you get the yes. West Coast down, you move to New York. Yeah. Otherwise, my son might go to college in California just to run the Maven Meals, and then I'll be mad at you. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Heidi, thank you so much for making time. You're always so generous with your mentorship. You've mentored women in our community. It was a game changer for them. You're helping so many people today by being here. So best of luck with the franchising. I will see you soon on thank one you. of our calls. Mwah. Okay. Great to see you today. All right, you too. Bye, Thanks. Julia. Thank Bye. you. My pleasure. Bye. Great to have you on. That was so fun. Well, we learned so much from Heidi about what it means to scale a business. Oh, and I think you have to press the little X in like, there we go. Yeah, we learned so much from Heidi about what it takes to scale up. I know some of the key takeaways that people will want to imp implement in their own business is a focus on systems and technology training your people and making sure to elevate them as leaders so that you can get out of the kitchen, whatever your kitchen is, right? It's a proverbial kitchen. Every entrepreneur has a version of that where they're too much in the weeds and too much in the day-to-day, -day, and that's why their business isn't growing or scaling. We also heard that you want to learn how to take risks, right? Make big decisions, and then sure, think on them, make sure to kick the tires, but don't be afraid of making those big decisions. 
I know every woman who signs up for our program, it's a really big decision for her. And it's sometimes the first time she's made a big decision on the spot and it's kind of scary, but it's far from the last big decision you'll have to make on the spot as you're hearing from Heidi. So then you can reverse engineer success by doing the Excel spreadsheet or the Google spreadsheet and figuring out what new opportunities is this going to bring me and how do I get there? Anyway, I'm so grateful to Heidi for coming on. Thank you for being here with us. And if you want to learn more about scaling up, please go to my website, juliapimsler.com and sign up for our newsletter. We're sharing lots of great tips and resources, including some of these CEO check-ins you might have missed with other great interviews with entrepreneurs scaling up. I'm so proud of Heidi, and now I want to go eat a very healthy lunch after talking to her. I'm sure you do too. Have an awesome rest of day. Stay brave and go big. Bye.